In Tokyo, a high schooler and huge bookworm called Kazuhito Harumi lives in a small apartment alone. Because of his father's work, the rest of his family moved to the country, but he stayed in Tokyo so he can get the latest book releases as soon as possible. Kazuhito's favorite author is called Shinobu Akiyama, a writer whose gender and identity are completely unknown. Shinobu writes all kinds of genres from science fiction to romantic comedy, and their books are incredibly popular. That author's series called Deadly Stins changed Kazuhito's life, but the final volume titled Lust still hasn't been released. Kazuhito thinks he can't die without reading it. One day, while he's reading at a cafe, Kazuhito notices his wallet is gone. Suddenly, a man pulls a shotgun out and threatens the cafe's owner to hand over all of his money. When he sees them, the scary man points his shotgun towards Kazuhito and the only other customer in the cafe, a beautiful black-haired woman. Strangely, the woman is completely focused on writing something even while her life is being threatened. When the robber prepares to shoot the woman, Kazuhito comes between them. Unfortunately, while the two are struggling, Kazuhito ends up being shot in the head. After he dies, Kazuhito wakes up floating in a sparkling void. He sees his loved ones flash before his eyes. His family, friends, and the owners of his favorite bookstore called Honda Booksellers. When he remembers he died before he could read Lust, the last book of the Deadly Sin series, and realizes he doesn't want to die, and there are still so many books he wants to read. Clinging onto those thoughts, he sees his sleeping dog in front of him and gets sucked into it. Suddenly, he wakes up alive once again. However, he is shocked to realize he isn't a human anymore, but rather a small dog. As a week passes, he finds out he was found abandoned in the rain, and the afro-wearing owner of a pet store took him in. Kazuhito is perfectly fine with accepting he's a dog, but he can accept the fact that he doesn't have access to any books. He tries telling the pet store owner he wants to read books, but he can't communicate with him. Since he can just bark, he's so desperate that he has already read all the labels on the items in the store. One day, the same black-haired woman who was in the cafe when he died enters the store. Ominously, she approaches Kazuhito's cage for some reason and asks the store owner to sell him to her. The store owner tells her Kazuhito isn't for sale, but the woman doesn't care. Without saying a word, she takes out a pair of scissors and cuts apart Kazuhito's cage, threatening the store owner into selling him to her. The next thing he knows, Kazuhito finds himself tied up in a dark room, being insulted and threatened by the strange woman. To Kazuhito's surprise, it turns out the woman can hear his thoughts. She doesn't know how she can do that, but for the last few days she heard a voice telling her to come to that pet store. She introduces herself as Kiriya Matsuno, but doesn't say anything about her occupation. For some reason, she hates Kazuhito and wants him to die. When Kazuhito mentions the robbery they were both caught up in, Kiriyim remembers it, and he remembers she is the girl who saved him. Suddenly, Kiriyim goes quiet and leaves the room. She showers and comes back to Kazuhito in her underwear. She tries seducing him, but he isn't interested in her in the least, which makes her angry. Since he doesn't have anywhere to go, Kiriyim tells him to stay at her house for a while. Kazuhito thinks she's suspicious, and even though she continues threatening him, he has no other choice but to accept her proposal. She asks him if there's anything he needs, and of course, he tells her he wants books. When Kirihim shows him her huge library, Kazuhito is happier than he's been in a long time. It turns out Kirihim is rich and she reveals she is a writer whose pen name is Shinobu Akiyama. Realizing this unreasonable woman is actually his favorite author, Kazuhito is shocked, but accepts it. While he's living with Kirihim, he finds out she's obsessed with writing, but she's also very good at cooking, cleaning, and even martial arts. She's doing all of those things so she can gather different experiences to make her books more interesting. She thinks the greatest thing an author can accomplish is changing her readers for the better with their books. Later, while he's watching a news broadcast, Kazuhito finds out the man who murdered him still hasn't been found by the police. Kazuhito thinks about his apartment number 101 in Sumia Hall and laments the fact that he dropped his wallet that day. Having heard his thoughts, Kiriyim calls someone to ask them about Kazuhito's apartment, and her contact tells her Kazuhito lived at room 102, not 101. The next day, Kiriyim decides to take Kazuhito out for a walk. On the way, they pass by the afro-wearing pet store owner and Kazuhito is happy to see him, but Kiriyim scares him with her threatening presence. Next, the two pass by an extremely flashy blonde girl surrounded by bodyguards who are making her even more noticeable by shining spotlights on her. The girl really wants to stand out, but is insulted when she realizes that Kiriyim doesn't even notice her. Before she can go after Kiriyim, one of the bodyguards drags the girl away. Next, they pass by Kirihito's favorite bookstore. Kirihim asks Kazuhito if he wants to go in, but he tells her it's fine. While they're continuing to walk, Kazuhito tells Kirihim to finish Lust as soon as possible, but she tells him she's missing the inspiration. 
Finally, Kirihime takes Kazuhito to his old apartment building called Sumia Hall. He's confused why they came there, but Kirihime Onlai tells him she wants to settle a score. Kazuhito reveals that the apartment building is owned by a distant relative of his who let him live there for free. The only thing he had to do is look after room 102, which is used as a storage for books. Since there wasn't much space there, Kazuhito decided to live in the neighboring room 101, but still spent most of his time reading the books in room 102. Revealing a ring full of keys, Kirihim unlocks room 102. She reveals that her sister is a policewoman and she used her influence to get the keys to all the apartments in Sumia Hall. Inside room 102, Kirihim tells Kazuhiko that she thinks the man who killed him found his wallet with a key to room 101. Since nobody is documented to be living in room 101, Kirihim thinks the politionally investigated room 102. Suddenly, the two hear a rattling noise and go outside to see Kazuhiko's murderer leaving room 101. When the man sees them, he breaks into a run, but Kiriheim and Kazuhito follow him. Once the man gets tired, they catch up to him on top of an overpass. Desperate, the man attacks Kiriheim. Having fallen onto the floor, she notices the man hit her with one of the books from her Deadly Sin series. When Kiriheim gets up, the murderer takes out another book from that series and takes a fighting stance. He declares that he can't be caught until he reads the final book of the Deadly Sin series. Hearing this, Kazuhito realizes the man must have read all of Kirihim's books while he was hiding in room 101 and the books changed him. Suddenly, Kirihim runs at the man and they continue fighting. This time, she holds her ground and Kazuhito notices both she and her opponent are using the nameless fist, the fighting style Kirihim made up for the Deadly Sin series. The murderer even starts using the Hound Step, a hypnotic move he learned from another one of Kirihim's books. Having successfully hypnotized Kirihim, the man batters her with her own thick books. After the man finishes his attack, Kirihim reveals she has cut open his pockets while they were fighting, making two more Deadly Sins books fall to the ground. Desperate to get the books back, the man is distracted and Kirihim manages to take all six of them from him. When he charges towards her, she knocks him out with a kick, and he ends up hanging over the overpass's railing. Turning toward Kazuhito, Kirihim tells him that even a dog can push the man over into oncoming traffic and suggests he should do it. Shocking Kirihim, Kazuhito takes the man down to safety. Kazuhito tells Kirihim he doesn't care about revenge since killing the man wouldn't make him turn into a human. Moreover, if he did it, he wouldn't be able to continue reading his books in peace. However, Kirihim isn't satisfied with his answer and wants to kill the man herself. Distressed, she admits she blames herself for Kazuhito's death since he died protecting her in the cafe while she kept writing her book. Kazuhito tells her it's not her fault that he died and that he just did what he wanted to do at the moment. Having read so much of her writing, he tells her he understands everything about her and knows she would do the same if she found herself in his situation. Listening to him, Kirihim starts crying and gives up on killing Kazuhito's murderer. That night, while they're going home, Kirihim is flustered and embarrassed. She tells Kazuhito she's having strange feelings towards him, but doesn't know how to express them. She also feels like she can continue writing her next book. One morning, Kazuhito wakes up to see a strange woman sitting at a table in the room. At first, he thinks she understands him. But it turns out she's talking to herself about weird things like gods and demons. At that moment, Kirihim enters the room and interrupts her. Kazuhito finds out that the woman is called Suzuna Hairaji, and that she's Kirihim's editor. This time, Suzuna tells Kirihim her latest manuscript is horrible, and that she must be in a slump. She gives her more time, but suggests she changes something to find new inspiration. It turns out that Suzuna is also a huge masochist who enjoys Kirihim's threats and abuse. Remembering how motivated Kirihim was after the incident with his murderer, he concludes that unusual and dangerous situations inspire her. Before Suzuna leaves, she tells Kirihim she should be careful because there has been talk about a slasher in the area. When Kirihim tells him she has been in a slump for three months already, Kazuhito realizes that's the same time when he arrived at her apartment. Hearing his thoughts, Kirihim tells him that he must be the reason for her slump and abuses him with her scissors. After a while, Suzuna visits again, but Kirihim still hasn't written anything good. Suzuma tells her that the slasher appeared again and that all his victims were stabbed with a sharp object while they were walking around at night. Kirihim tells her to use herself as bait to capture the slasher and offers to reward her with abuse, so Suzuna immediately gets excited and accepts. Soon, Kirihim herself sets out to find the slasher, even though her sister told her she absolutely shouldn't do it. Kazuhita follows her and the two of them start their investigation at Honda Booksellers. The owner's daughter called Sakura is working a counter, and her little sister called Yayoi also appears, interested in Kazuhito. 
Kirihime asks Sakura about the slasher and she says that there was a girl who managed to fend off the slasher using one of Shinobu Akiyama's books as a weapon. Sakura's father also says that another person was attacked just after buying one of Shinobu's books. When they leave the store, they come across a salaryman. They question him and he tells them a colleague of his was assaulted by the slasher after he came back from reading in a cafe. He too was reading a book by Shinobu Akiyama in that cafe. Continuing their investigation, Kirihime and Kazuhito come across the flashy girl from before, but Kirihime does her best to ignore her once again. Hearing her name, Kazuhito realizes the girl is a charismatic celebrity called Maxi Akazuki who became an idol and a book author at the same time. Along with Kirihime and a third author called Momiji Himhaji, Maxi is one of the three young best-selling authors of their age. Kirihime hates Maxi and thinks she's annoying for always following her around, while Maxi thinks she's better than Kirihime and wants to make her acknowledge that. In order to make her stop ignoring her, Maxi taunts Kirihime saying her breasts are bigger. Insulted, Kiriham gets ready to fight, but Maxi gets dragged away by one of her bodyguards before anything can happen. At the end of the investigation, Kiriham concludes that all the slasher attacks are connected to her books. Suddenly, they hear a commotion. It turns out the pet store owner was attacked, but luckily wasn't hurt. In the crowd gathered around him, Kiriham sees a suspicious person and starts running after them. Staying behind, Kazuhiro spots a book from the Deadly Sins series on the floor and approaches it, but gets caught in a trap. He remembers that in the past, his sister tried reading the Deadly Sins series because he loved those books so much. She was happy because she managed to connect with him over it. In the present, Kazuhito wakes up tied up in his old apartment. He is surprised to see his sister Madoka, who seems to somehow knows he's her brother, even though he's a dog. When he was still a human, while Kazuhito would just read books all the time, Madoka was super talented and popular, with her only bad feature being her horrible cooking. In the present, Kazuhito realizes Madoka can hear his thoughts and gets hopeful that he'll be able to return to his family and escape from Kirihim. However, he quickly finds out that Madoka can't hear him after all, and that she's just pretending he's her brother. Before Kazuhito died, Madoka wanted him to move back to the country with her and their parents, but she couldn't convince him. Now that he has been murdered because he stayed in the city, she feels like she should have taken better care of him. Her desire to protect him became warped at some point and she became obsessed with him. Acting like a maniac, she tells Kazuhiro Shuins to be with him forever, to his confusion and horror. Having prepared some disgusting-looking food she calls curry, she wants to feed him. But Kazuhito is desperately trying to dodge her spoon. To his relief, Madoka remembers she still needs to get pickles for her curry and goes out to the store. When Madoka leaves, Kirin finds Kazuhito and takes him home. She wants to get revenge on Madoka kidnapping Kazuhito, but he explains to her that Madoka is actually his sister. When she realizes Madoka would be her sister-in-law if she was married to Kazuhito, Kiriham gets embarrassed. The suspicious person Kiriham was chasing got away, but she found one of Shinobu Ikiyama's books lying on the ground. Both Kazuhito and Kiriham realize Madoka baited Kazuhito using Kiriham's book and Kiriham starts thinking she could be the slasher. Kazuhito doesn't agree, but Kiriham still wants to pay her a visit because she kidnapped her precious dog. The next day, Kazuhito and Kirihime look for Madoka, but they don't find her around Sumia Hall. Suzu notices them and tells Kirihime that the slasher appeared again. Kirihime scolds her because she promised to catch him and even Kazuhito starts insulting her, but Suzuna thoroughly enjoys being berated. Suzuna also reveals she has some new information. The night before, a girl was spotted in the park cutting up Shinobu Akiyama's books and crying. When she describes the girl's appearance, Kazuhito recognizes her as Madoka and gets concerned. Visiting the park, Kirihim and Kazuhito find scraps of paper strewn on the ground. Suddenly, Madoka appears, happy to see Kazuhito. Kirihim tells her the one she's calling her brother is actually her dog and the two of them start arguing. When Madoka confirms that she was destroying the books the night before, Kirihim throws a smoke bomb and disappears with Kazuhito. At her apartment, Kirihim concludes that Madoka is the slasher. She suspects that Madoka thought that Shinobu Akiyama was stealing away her beloved brother from her and felt like her books were more important than his sister to him. Going a step further, she says that Madoka might have become mentally unstable after Kazuhiro died. Because of that, she lost control and started blaming Shinobu and her books for Kazuhiro's death, since books were the reason he moved to Tokyo. Hearing this, Kazuhiro realizes he was too scared to think about how his family felt about his death. However, he chooses to believe that Madoka isn't actually the slasher, and if she is, he swears he will stop her. Since he's just a dog, he asks Kirihim to help him, telling her he trusts and respects her. Kirihim tells him she's ready to do her best to help, when Madoka suddenly crashes through the window and grabs Kazuhito. 
It turns out she put a tracking device on him and followed the signal to find him. Kiriheim then reveals herself to Madoka as Shinobu Ekiyama, the author she hates so much. She tells her that, that she saw Kazuhio die in front of her eyes because he protected her from the robber that attacked them. Even though Madoka doesn't want to hear it, Kirihime tells her that Kazuhigo would be unhappy if he saw what she was doing. Madoka realizes she's right, but still refuses to face her feelings and escapes, jumping out of the window. When they land, Madoka tells Kazuhigo that she doesn't actually think the dog is him. After Kazuhigo died, Madoka came to Tokyo and searched his neighborhood, hoping to find him. She set a trap with one of Kazuhigo's favorite books, and when she trapped a dog, she thought that only her brother would fall for something like that. Madoka thinks she's a terrible sister, but Kazuhiro thinks she's the best sister in the world. Unfortunately, he has no way to tell her that. Suddenly, Kiridim arrives, revealing she used a tracking device on Kazuhiro too. Preparing to fight, Madoka takes out a strange electric knife called Tuma Eater she admits she bought through mail order. It turns out she was always cooking for Kazuhiko with that bizarre knife and Kazuhiro can't believe he has never seen it before. Kiriheim then takes out her pair of scissors and the two start fighting. They seem equals at first, but then Madoka activates something called genocide mode, making her knife transform into a chainsaw. Madoka's weapon is now much more powerful, but Kiriheim still dodges every one of her attacks. Finally, Madoka's chainsaw gets stuck in a tree, giving Kiriheim the opportunity to cut off its blades. Madoka admits she knows that nothing she does will bring Kazuhiko back, but still doesn't want to give up. She activates destroy mode, turning the tuna eater into a gun. When she shoots the strange gun at Kiriheim, Kiriheim somehow manages to cut the bullet in half, making it explode behind her. Not believing her eyes, Madoka drops to her knees defeated. After the fight, Kiriheim and Madoka start getting along and talking normally. Madoka reveals that the reason she was cutting up Kiriheim's books is because Kazuhito told her not to ever sell books to use bookstores, since the author loses royalties that way. Hearing this, Kiriheim asks Madoka if she has anything to do with the slasher incidents and Madoka has no idea what she's talking about. Her only crimes were cutting up the books and kidnapping Kazuhito. Later, Kazuhito sees Suzuma in front of the apartment building and tells her he figured out she can hear his thoughts. When they met up with her the last time, she showed signs that she heard Kazuhito's insults too, not just Kirihime's. Kazuhito also realized that most of the information about the slasher came from Suzuna herself and thinks that she even paid various people to lie to him and Kirihime. He thinks Suzuna's motive for all that was getting Kirihime out of her slump by putting her in a dangerous situation. Suzuna admits he's right and tells him that for the sake of Kirihime and her books, she's ready to do anything. Kazuhito tells her he doesn't want her to interfere with Kirihime's writing process and lie to her. Taking out scalpels from somewhere, Suzuna throws some at Kazuhito, wondering what kind of story Kirihime would write if he would die. However, she quickly says she's kidding and starts leaving, telling Kazuhito she has no proof of her interfering with the slasher incident. Before Suzuna can leave, Kirihime appears, having heard the entire conversation. She reveals that she noticed Suzuma's lies at the same time Kazuhito did and Suzuma immediately admits everything. Kirihim tells her she has already gotten out of her slump all by herself a day earlier, and that it had nothing to do with the incident Suzuna made up. She tells Suzuna she's glad she tried to help, but not to interfere anymore since she's capable of getting out of her slumps by herself. Threatening her, she says she'll start being nice to her if she continues interfering and Suzuna is horrified. The next day, Kirihim sends Madoka before she gets on her train back home. She tells her she will allow her to call her dog Kazuhito and Madoka is happy. After she leaves, Kazuhito asks himself what happened to the real slasher in the end and Suzuna appears. She reveals that she encountered and beat up the slasher the same night when Kirihime ordered her to capture him. Sometime later, Kazuhito visits Honda booksellers to pick up some books Kirihime ordered for him. Yedoi enters and cuddles him intensely. After that, Shesibli tells him she'll have to leave the town soon because Honda booksellers is going to close. When he returns to the apartment, Kazuhito tells that to Kirihime but she doesn't see it as a big deal. Even though she doesn't really care, Kazuhito tells her about his relationship with Honda booksellers. The previous spring, when he first moved to the Tokyo, he saw Honda booksellers for the first time and immediately attracted him. Inside, a rude old woman was complaining to Sakura about selling boring books such as the ones Shinobu Akiyama wrote. Hearing this, Kazuhito couldn't let it go, so he held a lecture about how good the book she's complaining about actually is. His speech was so long that the old woman disappeared in the middle of it without Kazuhito noticing. Suddenly, the store owner arrives, thinking his daughter is being bothered by Kazuhito, but she tells him he actually saved him. Both Sakura and her father are grateful, and the father even lets Kazuhito choose a free book. 
Kazuhito notices the bookstore has some rare books, and the owner immediately recognizes him as an experienced reader, so they become good friends. In the present, Kazuhito finishes his story, but then notices that Kiriheim fell asleep at some point during it. The next day, Kazuhito visits Hamna booksellers and sees Yayoi arguing with her sister Sakura. Yayoi runs away, grabbing Kazuhito with her. She stops at a playground and tells Kazuhito that Sakura doesn't care if the store closes. However, Yaiwa cares because she doesn't want the family to fall apart because of it. In order to save the store, Yaiwa decides to take Kazuhika with her and advertise Honda booksellers all by herself. While they're walking through town, they come across Maxi, who's as flashy as always. When Yaiwa tells her about her situation, Maxi says she will completely change Honda booksellers and make it brilliant and shiny like her. However, Yaiwa wants the store to stay the same as always and runs away sulking. At sunset, Yayoi realizes can't find her way home anymore, so Kazuhito wants to lead her there. Yayoi won't move and just starts crying, thinking of the store's fate. Kazuhito tries comforting her, but since he can't talk, his options are limited. Suddenly, Kiriyama appears, accusing Kazuhito of making Yayoi cry. When she asks Yayoi what's wrong, the little girl tells her she doesn't want to go back because she's afraid of Sakura being mad at her. She also feels bad about telling Sakura she hates her. Consoling her, Kirihim tells Yeoi she should apologize to her sister and Yeoi agrees to go back to the store with her. When they return to the store, Yeoi apologizes and Sakura hugs her, telling her she's sorry for fighting with her too. Kirihim asks Sakura if the store is really going to close, but it turns out it's not. Yeoi heard her parents arguing and thought they were going to get a divorce since she watched too much TV and saw something similar. Sakura explains that their parents' arguments aren't that serious and the store isn't going to close, which cheers Yeoi up. The next day, Kirihim tells Kazuhito she needs his help finding her bra, when he goes in to sniff her so he can find her bra by smell. She gets embarrassed. However, he still can't find the bra and when Suzuna visits, Kirihim tells her to join their search. After a while, Kazuhito gives up and starts reading a book, but Kirihim tells her to continue looking. While they're struggling, a cardboard box falls of a shelf, revealing a device for making breasts bigger that Kirihim bought in the past. She gets extremely embarrassed and attacks Kazuhito as usual. When they don't find her bra in her apartment, Kiriheim, Kazuhito, and Suzume visit the gym where she was exercising that morning, but they still can't find it. On their way back, they encounter a bodybuilder called Munakata and his group of friends. When Kiriheim hears they're doing exercises to increase their busts, she decides to stay with them for a while and Suzune joins her. Returning to the apartment, Kazuhito starts reading a book, but finds Kiriheim's bra under the blanket he usually uses. He remembers that the night before he was looking for something warm and realizes he must have taken Kirihim's bra by accident. Terrified of Kirihim punishing him, he decides to try hiding the evidence. When Kirihim and Suzuna come back to the apartment, it's obvious that Kazuhiro tried reaching Kirihim's bra drawer. Since he couldn't do it, he escaped outside to think of a different solution to his problem. While she's looking for Kazuhiro around town, Kirheim asks Sakura if she has seen him. Sakura tells him she hasn't, but that she's concerned because there have been traffic accidents lately. Later, while Kirihim is searching around the subway station, she notices someone suspicious following her. Meanwhile, Kazuhito is trying to bury the bra in a forest, but encounters a strange maid frolicking around and singing. When she starts holding a monologue, Kazuhito realizes she is quoting a book by Momiji Hanhagi, one of the three most popular young writers. When she finishes, Kazuhito sneezes and she notices him. Because he saw her, the maid gets embarrassed and then turns furious, deciding to kill him. Revealing that the broom she's holding is actually a spear she attacks. At that moment, Kiriheim, who is already concerned about Kazuhito, hears his thoughts about someone trying to kill him. While Kazuhito is running away from the maid, he ends up in the middle of traffic. He almost gets hit by a truck, but Kiriheim rescues him at the last moment. When the maid catches up to them, Kiriheim realizes she was trying to kill her dog and prepares to fight. However, before they can start, the maid hears a man selling roasted potatoes. Thinking that her mistress will like them, she leaves Kiriheim and leaves to buy them. After the danger is over, Kiriheim is relieved that Kazuhito is alright. She notices he's carrying her bra and gets embarrassed. It turns out the bra has a decoration on it in the shape of a dachshund, which is the same breed of dog as Kazuhito. Realizing that Kiriheim likes dogs, Kazuhito starts acting like a dog to make her be nicer to him, but Kirihim gets angry and threatens him with her scissors, having heard all his thoughts. Some time later, Kirihim takes Kazuhito to a weird blade-themed hot springs inn. Kazuhito isn't particularly interested, but seeing a shelf full of books, he gets excited. On the shelf, there is a book he has never seen before called Celestial Romance. When Madoka appears, Kazuhito finds out that Kirihim invited her to come with them, 
since she thinks she will be her sister-in-law in the future. It turns out that Carrie Haim is a longtime visitor to the inn as she even has her own room called the Scissors Room. When Madoka tries taking Kazuhigo to her room, Kiri tells her he's staying with her, and they start arguing again. Suddenly, a phone alarm rings on Kiri phone, and Kiri stops the argument to tell everyone it's time to go bathing. It turns out that Sakura from the bookstore and her friend Hemi are also visiting the hot springs. After the bath, they all eat together. We find out that Kiri has secretly planned out the trip to be as romantic as possible, but so far her plans have failed. Her plan for a romantic dinner at sunset is also ruined when it turns out that Suzuma and a club she's in called the Misochis Order have come to the inn for their yearly trip. While all that is happening, a man is observing Kiriheim without her knowledge. That night, Kiriheim plans to sleep side by side with Kazuhito. However, when she sees Kazuhito sleeping surrounded by books, she gets angry and punishes him with her scissors. The next morning, Kiriheim takes a walk with Kazuhito. On their way, they see Maxi, but do their best to ignore her. Visiting a whetstone shop, Carrie Ian comes across the maid she almost fought the other day. They almost fight this time too, but they connect over the fact that they're using the same brand of whetstone to sharpen their weapons. Meanwhile, in the inn's kitchen, Madoka starts preparing curry for Kazuhito and finds it difficult to cook without her tuna ear knife. When he and Kiri Ian come back to the inn, Kazuhito notices the maids are behaving strangely. Ignoring that, Kiri Ian tells Kazuhito if she's going to sharpen her scissors in the bath naked. She tells him he absolutely can't peek on her even though she secretly wants him to do just that. In the bath, Kiriim is joined by Suzume and Maxi. While Kiriim continues sharpening her scissors, the two of them get dizzy staying in the bath too long. Meanwhile, Kazuhio comes back to the scissors room and he's terrified to see that it's a mess. Acting like zombies, the inn staff start approaching him carrying various weapons. Strangely, they ignore him and continue toward the women's bath. Concerned about Kiriheim, Kazuhito enters the bath a moment before the staff breaks in. Kirihim tells him that she has been attacked by stalkers before in a similar way. Because her scissors got dull fighting all those stalkers from before, she needs to sharpen them, but she doesn't have time to finish. While she's desperately defending against the inn staff, Kazuhito looks for help, but realizes he can't rely on either Suzuna or Maxi. He decides to do his best to protect Kirihim while she finishes sharpening her scissors. When he finds himself in trouble, Madoka arrives to save him carrying a tuna eater she found in the storage of the inn. She uses it like a chainsaw, and Kiriham soon joins her with her sharpened scissors. Together, the two of them fight off and defeat all the attackers. The next morning, the inn's owner apologizes, and the staff claims they don't remember what happened. Kiriham doesn't care about them and swears she will come back to the inn with Kazuhito one day, and that this time everything will go according to her plans. One day, while Kiriham and Kazuhito are browsing at Honda booksellers, Sakura recommends an award-winning book called Celestial Romance. It's by a new author called Hotaru Fuzumaki, and Kirihim decides to buy it. Seeing it, Kazuhito remembers it was at the Hot Springs Inn too, but he doesn't know anything about that author. When they come back to their apartment, they realize that someone has broken into it. Kirihim doesn't notice it, but Kazuhito tells her there is one more book in the library than there was before they returned. It turns out the book is a copy of Celestial Romance, just like the one Kirihim has just bought. Kirihim starts thinking her mysterious stalker is the one who broke in but there are absolutely no signs of being broken into. After a short while, both Kazuhito and Kirihim start reading Celestial Romance out of curiosity. When Kazuhito finishes it first, he looks at Kirihim reading and is suddenly attracted to her. Unable to control himself, he jumps on her but ends up thrown into the trash can. After she finishes Celestial Romance, Kirihim is surprised to see him in the trash can since she was so focused on the book she didn't even notice she threw him into it. Kazuhito gets nervous, not wanting to admit he was attracted to Kirihim, but since she can read his thoughts, she finds out and starts making fun of him. However, when he jokingly says she's right and that he has fallen in love with her, she gets genuinely flustered. Changing the topic, Kazuhito asks Kirihim what she thought of Celestial Romance. Kirihim thinks that it can't be an amateur's book since it's written too well. Both of them also notice the book's style is strongly influenced by Kirihim's books. In order to find out more about the mysterious Hotaru Fuzumaki, Kirihim invites Suzuma to her apartment. Threatening Suzuna with her scissors, Kirihim finds out that Hotaru is a high school girl and that her father is Shuzen Osawa, a famous historical novel writer. Suzuna adds that there are rumors that Hotaru used her father's influence to make her debut. Finding out Hotaru's address from Suzuna, Kirihim decides to visit her with Kazuhito. It turns out the address is the same as Kazuhito's former high school. He mentions that once during exams, he went to a bookstore in that area to buy one of Kirihim's books. 
When he says that she was more important to him than the exams, Karyam gets flustered. But when he corrects that he meant her books and not her, she beats him up. While all that is happening, a mysterious man is following them. While Kazuhito is leading Kirihame through a warehouse as a shortcut to the school, Kirihame suddenly feels like they're surrounded. Regular townspeople appear, acting like zombies just like the people in the Hot Springs Inn. Kirihame quickly knocks out all of the attackers and the man who is following her finally appears before her eyes. When he takes off his hat, Kazuhito recognizes him as Shuzen Osawa. Kirihame quickly ties Shuzen up and interrogates him, but he doesn't lose spirit, even while he's defeated. Shuzen reveals that he really did break into Kirihame's apartment using his connection to the owner of a security company. It turns out that his daughter asked him to give the book she has written to Kirihame, who is known as Shinobu Akiyama. Kirihame tells him he could have just mailed it to her, but Shuzen says he didn't actually want to give it to her after all. He thinks Kirihime is a bad influence on his daughter and hates Kirihime's books. Kirihime realizes that Shuzen wasn't the one who sent those zombie-like people after her, even though he's lying to protect her daughter. When there's no way for him to convince her otherwise, Shuzen admits that his daughter must have done it and that she wants to meet Shinobu Akiyama for some reason. Hearing this, Kirihime decides to visit Hotaru. When Kirihime and Kazuhito arrive at the high school, it's already dark. Kirihime decides to go look for Hotaru and leaves Kazuhito to go where he wants. Kazuhiro visits the school library he spent a lot of time in and enjoys recalling his time there. Behind some books, he finds a manuscript he was looking for. Suddenly, Hemi appears and somehow recognizes him as Kazuhiro. Kazuhiro realizes she is actually Hotaru Fuzumaki, the writer who's behind everything. In the past, Kazuhiro found Hemi's manuscript and started reading it. Having noticed him, Hemi got extremely embarrassed and tried running away. However, Kazuhiro stopped her and told her he wants to read the rest of it. Hami is an extremely shy and negative girl, so when Kazuhito read her story and told her it was too heavily influenced by Shinobu Akiyama, she felt bad. However, Kazuhito quickly told her that he still thought it was interesting, and that it was obvious she wrote what she wanted to write. He told her she should finish it properly and even suggest submitting it to a contest, but Hami has no self-esteem and doesn't want to waste the judge's time on reading her novel. She thought she could never become an author, but when Kazuhito told her he wants to read more from her, she was happy. She promised she will become an author, but she also made him promise to be her first reader. In the present, Hama says she doesn't actually understand him, but somehow knows he's Kazuhio, even though he's a dog. When Sakura told her a dog would come to buy books every day, she started thinking the dog must be Kazuhio. Then when she saw him find her manuscript behind the books in the library, she was sure it was him because only the two of them knew about it. She tells him she became a legitimate author, just like she promised. However, she admits she had to use her father's influence to get published. She could never finish her first novel, though the one Kazuhito read when they were going to high school. Now she feels like a fake writer because she relied on her father. In order to become a real writer, she wants to literally defeat the writer inside her, who influenced her the most, Shinobu Akiyama. Using the school announcement system, Hemi calls Kirihim to come the roof, telling her she has her dog. When they meet up on the roof, she tells Kirihim she wants to settle their dispute with a writing contest. When the contest starts, both authors begin writing with incredible speed. The first author who writes a 100 pages long story wins. Suddenly, Hemi starts writing using two pens, but soon her hand gets cramped so she stops. She uses different Osawa family techniques to try to distract Kirihim, like shaking the table or whispering, but Kirihim remains in the lead. Hemi then asks Kirihim what she thought of celestial romance. When Kirihim tells her she thought it wasn't bad, Hemi presses a button and the library transforms into a hall of mirrors. Suddenly, Kirihim grasps her scissors and tries to stab herself with them, barely able to resist. Hami reveals that in Celestial Romance, there are certain keywords that appear and compel people who have read it to kill a woman with red eyes, dressed in black and carrying scissors, meaning Kirihim. Even though not all people are susceptible to the effect, this is the reason why all those random attacked Kirihim in the past. Telling Hami not to underestimate her, Kirihim take a pen in her mouth and continues writing her story. Writing almost as quickly as before, Kirihim finishes her last page before Hami can do it. Falling into despair, Hami raises her pen to stab herself with it, but Kazuhito stops her. Hami thinks she isn't good enough to be a writer, but Kazuhito brings her first novel manuscript, trying to tell her to continue writing it. Kirihim speaks up, telling Hami that Shuzen said she didn't actually get published because of him. It turns out her novel is the real deal and Kirihim acknowledges her. Kirihim tells her that there's no such thing as a fake writer, since all writers write because they want someone to read their books. 
She reminds her that Kazuhito and her other readers are looking forward to her books and Hami realizes she wants to continue writing. Hami asks Kazuhito if he's going to read her next book and he barks in agreement cheering her up. Kazuhito also tells her she wants to write her next book. The next day at Kirihime's apartment, Kirihime and Hami write together. It turns out that Kirihime has written hypnotic suggestions into her latest book and when Kazuhito reads it, he's compelled to jump into her arms. Sometime later, Madoka visits to make some curry for Kazuhito to his horror. She brings out her tuna eater type 0 and starts making something unfathomable in the kitchen. Even though Kazuhito suspects the worst, he's surprised to notice the food she's cooking actually smells good this time. However, when he looks into the pot, there's a blue stew inside that looks inedible. Wanting to escape the curry, Kazuhito visits Honda booksellers, but he gets fluffed by Sakura's little sister Yaoi. Afterwards, he watches Sakura work and is proud at how well she's handling it. Suddenly, one of Maxi's bodyguards enters the store and asks to buy all books by Shinobu Akiyama and Momiji Himheiji. Confused as to why he did that, Kazuhito goes out to follow him. Meanwhile, Kirihim is looking for Kazuhito outside. Losing the bodyguard's trail, Kazuhito wanders into a park, where he sees the red-haired maid from before singing. Once again, the maid notices him and tries to kill him for seeing her, while he desperately dodges her broom spear. Suddenly, Kirihim appears and blocks the spear. They have a fierce fight, but they're equally matched. The maid tells Kirihim she's been in hundreds of battles and introduces herself as Sachi Moraib, the former ace from a shady foreign service agency. However, now she is only working for her mistress who she loves very much. Before they can continue their fight, a helicopter appears playing a familiar song. It turns out Maxi is riding it, and she announces she arrived to settle the score with Kirihim once and for all. Maxi is insulted because her books are being displayed with Shinobu Akiyama's and Momiji Himhagi's and announces that she has bought out all their books. She reveals an ominous tower and announces she's going to hold something called a nine-story tower writing contest to prove who the brightest shining author in the world is. In that kind of contest, the participants have to write nine short stories and are judged by nine judges. Suddenly, Saki charges at Maxi, walking up the tower. Maxi's bodyguards try protecting her, but Saki defeats them all without breaking a sweat. When Saki reaches Maxi, she tells her that her mistress, Momiji Hamhagi, is the best writer in the world. Everyone is surprised that Saki is actually Momiji's maid. On top of the tower, Kiriheim, Maxi, and Saki face each other and prepare to compete. Kiriheim and Maxi prepare to write with an intense passion, but before they can start actually start, Maxi gets dragged away by one of her bodyguards. After her, Saki leaves too, leaving Kazuhito disappointed that nothing happened, even though he anticipated a fierce competition between the writers. Visiting Honda booksellers, Kiriheim and Kazuhito come across Hami. Hami tells Sakura she's going to become a real author and Sakura is proud of her. Suddenly, Madoka enters the store and tells the two of them she has passed her high school entrance exams. Even though her parents were against it, Madoka decided to enroll into a high school in Tokyo and move to a dorm there. She wanted to move to the place where her brother was and live her life to the fullest for him. Hearing this, Kazuhiko is proud of her sister and reluctantly decides to eat her curry after all. At the apartment, Madoka feeds a disgusting rainbow-colored curry to Kazuhito and he forces himself to eat it. One day, Suzuna visits Kirihime and finds her completely focused on her writing. She tells Kazuhito she came to suggest Kirihime to reveal herself to the public. Suzuna tells Kazuhito that Kirihime is hiding her identity because she was only a middle schooler when she started writing and she didn't want her readers to change their opinions about her books based on that. However, Suzuna thinks that Kirihime has built up her reputation enough for her to be able to reveal herself to the public. She thinks that if Kirihime started appearing on TV shows or interacting with other writers more, she could get more inspiration to finish her Deadly Sin series. However, she has another motive, which is becoming her producer and making her do things like wear cute clothes. She takes a cute kimono, and using a special editor technique, she puts it on Kirihime without her noticing. She does the same with various other outfits, and Kirihime doesn't even flinch. In the end, Suzuna wants to make Kirihime wear a school swimsuit but Kirihim finally notices what she was doing and punishes her. After all that, Suzuna decides to get Kirihim drunk and see how she'll act. She thinks that Kirihim's drunk self might be kinder than her usual self usual, and wants to use that to make her more presentable to the public. Using another one of her editing techniques, she sneakily puts alcohol in Kirihim's cup and she drinks it. Suddenly, Kirihim gets out of her chair. Getting completely drunk, Kirihim starts being nice towards Kazuhigo, proving Suzuna's theory. However, when Kirihime starts acting nice towards Suzuna too, she's horrified since she isn't getting abused anymore. Wanting to make her violent again, Suzuna makes Kirihime drink even more. 
However, Kirim gets in an even better mood and tells Suzuna she loves her, which makes her collapse on the floor. Kirihim cuddles Kazuhio and doesn't get mad even when he mentions her flat chest. He continues talking about it, but Kirihim gets self-conscious instead of angry. Feeling sorry for her, Kazuhito tells her he doesn't think the size of breasts matters. Hearing this, Kirihim is overjoyed and somehow concludes he's proposing to her. She starts imagining their wedding, their honeymoon, and then them picking the color of their baby's room, to Kazuhito's horror. After she finally quits imagining things, Kirihim brings Kazuhito to her bed. She pins him down and starts feeling a warmth spreading through her. It turns out she's feeling sick and she ends up vomiting all over Kazuhito. The next day, Kirihim returns to her usual self. Noticing he smells like vomit, Kirihim offers to bathe Kazuhito, surprising him with genuine kindness this time. Sometime later, Kirihim gives Kazuhito her newest book to read. After he reads it, she reveals it's actually just a plot summary even though it's as thick as a regular book. Surprised, Kazuhito tells her it's way too long and that she should focus on Lust, the last volume of her Deadly Sin series. When he calls her a flat-chested sadist, Kirihim gets furious and attacks him with her scissors. 